Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. This evening I'm looking at a fascinating book about Lord Hoffman. Now, most of us have come across the name or have had some dealings with him. I certainly have in the past. I have a very high regard for his um, excellence in terms of an understanding of uh, the legal system the way we do things legally, and a general philosophical approach. So this book is called The Jurisprudence of Lord Hoffman, and it's then got a subtitle, A Festschrift in Honour of Lord Hoffman. So therefore it's the coming together of quite a lot of articles to say what a great guy he is, and he is. It's been edited by Paul S. Davis and Justine Pilar, and it's part of the... Um, it's Bloomsbury, who are the overall publishers, and it's actually Hart Publications and Hart Publishing who are responsible for producing this hardback book with an interesting picture of him on the front. Now, Elizabeth and I talked about this book because I explained from the legal point of view who Lord Hoffman is um, in terms of what we think about him, and we talked about him and his contribution to the law, and which is very substantial, and we therefore decided on a title for our book review, Enhancing Understanding of Jurisprudence, a scholarly and celebratory tribute to Lord Hoffman. That's what you're getting. Now, I'm going to show you the book first of all. It's a detailed book, nice picture of him on the front. Um, nothing much on the spine really at all, and then nothing much at the back. There are other books available um, which come from Hart. But in fact, what we've got at the back is some information about the authors themselves. They're a very small amount of information. And then at the front, we've got information about Lord Hoffman himself. Then the book itself, there's a um, detailed index right at the back, which you can see there. You get, after the index, you've got a whole range of uh, commentaries from the various people who've been invited to write this. Detail about Lord Hoffman. And then that's the front page. And then after that, you've got a forward by Lord Sumption, well known to many for some of his views. He's a justice, of course, of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. He makes a very good point in his rousing preface. And there's, uh, sorry, his forward. And then we have a preface after that, which explains what the purpose of this is from the two editors. Then there are the contents section. You can see the various points that are raised throughout. Uh, looking at some of the case law that he's been involved in over the years. There are 19 chapters in total. You can see those there. Then there's a list of all of the people who are the contributors. It's difficult for me to go through all of them by name, but these are people who are well known to many of you, and they are extremely eminent people in their own right, paying um, a, a great deal of uh, tribute to Lord Hoffman. There is the uh, table of cases which are referred to, legislation also referred to. Then we get the first um, chapter is actually from Colin Tapper, introductory remarks on the law of evidence. Of course, Colin Tapper will be well known to many law students for his excellent uh, books, which we had all those years ago. And what you've got, of course, is you do have a nice bit of footnoting to cover all the points made, and they run, run through quite nicely. Now, it's always nice to have these books, whether they be memoirs, uh, of a particular judge, or whether they be uh, books which bring together views by all the learned people of the era to say this is what this man or this woman has done and this is why their decision making will stand the test of time and why they've made decisions in a, per a particular way and what the impact has been for the public and for the legal system itself. So I think this is a lovely gold mine of nuggets, if I can put it that way, the individual chapters, for the jurisprudent who is looking possibly to evaluate and appreciate um, Lenny Hoffman's career. Um, I certainly read this book and came away thinking, um, I thought I knew a bit about what he'd been doing and I knew nothing really compared with the huge amount of input which he and many of his fellow uh, judges have actually been involved in over what is a long period of time. So this is what we say about the book. Knowing only about 10 words in German, we learnt a new word today gleaned from the subtitle of this book, 
Um, Festschrift. Well, me neither. Um, by sm surmising that it refers to a celebration of sorts, one cannot help but envisage here the spectacle of foaming steins of beer borne aloft by rosy-cheeked waiting staff in Lederhosen or Dunals as appropriate. Well, don't think it's quite like that, but however, that's to get your uh, attention for what's a good book. But no, we mean yes, the book does commemorate a celebration, namely a conference held in honour of Lord Hoffman on the occasion of his 80th birthday at St Catherine's College, Oxford, in April 2015, and I'm recording this towards the end of 2015. Recently been published by Hart, who are, uh, as the imprint of Bloomsbury, it contains 19 essays from 20 contributors, all academics in the law at Oxford University. And for jurisprudence, then, the book is a gem. Indeed, anyone interested in the law and its continuing evolution will find this book rather a treat, we think. As well as offering studied opinion and penetrating insight, the contributors reveal personal reminiscences and accounts of their friendships and professional acquaintanceship with Lord Hoffman, whose towering reputation places him as one of the most important and influential of English jurists. And in his opening remarks, Colin Tapper, who's the Emeritus Professor of Law at All Souls, who studied Lord Oxford at the same time as Lord Hoffman, known at the time as Lenny, refers that he was, uh, recalls rather, that he was born in the same year as Lord Hoffman, a time when apparently legal education was at a low ebb. <laughs> it has actually improved, I would hasten to add since then, just in case you're or worried in Oxford, you academics. Many colleges had no law fellow, and indeed many uh, fellows were either unqualified or incompetent. I'm glad things had changed then. Now there's quite a re revelation, isn't it, <laughs> we've got from that. Now what Tappers adds is that many of the qualified were incompetent, very few of the unqualified were competent. That This was the state of affairs before things began to change, and in my opinion, says Tapper, Lenny's year marked the final advent of complete academic respectability of law as a subject in this university. Thus was the beginning of an illustrious career which spanned both the practice of law and academia, the details of which are amply illuminated in this book. The chapters in this volume, says Lord Sumption in the foreword, are a tribute to a remarkable legal mind and to the respect in which Lord Hoffman is held, even by those who profoundly disagree with him. And there's obviously going to be a bit of politics in it, let's be blunt about that, but however, that's a very important statement by assumption. The diverse range of commentary in the book covers what one assumes is the full spectrum of Hoffman's jurisprudence in, for example, taught human rights law, administrative, media, intellectual property and employment law, and much more besides, including tax, property and corporate law. Well, that's most of it, isn't it? But you see what a wide range and area substantive law issues he covers. One of Hoffman's most notable qualities as a teacher, as well as a judge, is in the words of Lord Walker, quoted by the editors, the ability to suffuse even the most technical subject with intellectual excitement, which most law students will admit is a quite rare and valuable talent. Let me conclude by saying I'm, this is actually a first-class book, it's well worth reading, this is what we think. It's for lawyers in any area of law. It's a book which is an important read and it's handy for researchers because it's extensively footnoted and comes complete with a lengthy table of cases and an index at the back. And for any interested reader, this distinguished volume gives the rigorous discipline of jurisprudence an almost a unique accessibility. And it's, it's actually very good for anybody who is looking for a really high mark in jurisprudence to read this book because you will get a much better feel, I would suggest, about what we mean when we talk about jurisprudence and what these guys right at the top are really like. Because I've always believed one thing and that is you know your judge. Know what they're like, how they think, then you are halfway there with trying to understand how they probably arrive at certain types of decision. Anyway, enough of that. 
the publication date is cited at 2015. Uh, it's a delightful book. I'm delighted that Bloomsbury and Hart have produced this work. There he is again, just opening it right in the middle. I've got here Lord Hoffman and the Law of Employment, The Floor of Rights. There we go, we've got some quite interesting stuff here from uh, Bob Heppel is mentioned, in fact, no less. So we've got a very, very large number of suspects are mentioned in this book. Beatson, uh, all the people that you as a student will probably remember do appear somewhere. Uh, for instance, there's Tax Law and Principles, Lord Hoffman. So you get the really heavy stuff too. And as I've said before, do note the very detailed index because I did find the index was very interesting. If there's anything particular you're looking for in what has been an absolutely distinguished career by one of our leading current judges. Thank you, Lord Hoffman, for everything you've done for us, which has been really great. It's been a tremendous contribution to society. This book in its own right is a tremendous contribution to your contribution. So thank you. Bye-bye.